I don't care too much for bullets. Knowledge is not power. No, it's not. <sighs> Four. What are we here? Four seven, buddy. Four seven. Maybe. Inverse. Trig. Function. Inverses. Shoot me now. I'll have to bring it down a little bit. All right, inverse trick function. This is where things get a little strange. Um, so, for instance, if we're looking at f of x is equal to sine of x, and we graph sine of x, here's um, the four cuts, and this is 2 pi. And it goes one high and one low. So just a quick sketch of it. Where does the sign start? Definitely on the origin. <laughs> Definitely on the origin. Then at pi over 2, it's high, middle, low, no. middle, and we no. get our nice sine curve. Now, if I talk about the inverse function of this graph, what's wrong with this graph? It's not an inverse. It's not invertible. It's not invertible. Well, invertible, well, not inversible. Invertible. Right. Why is it not invertible? All because of your zeros? The horizontal line test. Yeah, that's because of the horizontal line test, mm -hmm. this graph is getting hit right. twice, twice for one single y value. Say like y equals a half. It's going to have two different solutions. And that doesn't work because if you want an inverse, it has to be one, two, one. one. So what I have to do is get kind of creative. I have to do what's called a restricted domain on the sine graph. So if we're going to restrict the domain... I want to pick a part of the graph where it is one to one, but also centered or near, you know, zero is part of the answer. So it is one to one from this point all the way to this point, but the problem is it doesn't include zero, and I'd rather it include zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pi over two to the right and pi over two to the left. And if I graph that portion, of the sine graph, just that little restricted area, you will get this point here, this point here, and this point here. Nice and pretty. Why? I'm backing off one period. If I back off here, you get a low point, and you get this part of the graph. So if I use this part, I include some negative numbers, I do get that zero that I really want involved, and I get some positive numbers. So when I say it's going from negative 2 to pi over 2, this is my new domain. Negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. What's my range? Uh, negative 1 to 1. Negative 1 to 1. It, it contains the entire range for sine, which is nice. When you say the domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, you have to eventually get this back into unit circle quadrants. So what quadrants are we talking about here? Fourth and first. So we're talking about the fourth and the first quadrants only work for the sine inverse. If you think about it as a picture, your angle has to be over here. Cannot be over in second or third quadrant. So when you use a sine inverse, you're going to get answers in the first half of the unit circle on the right-hand side. You do not get the answers that are on the left-hand side. Even though your answer might be over here, we have to adjust it to get to it. So it's not a perfect inverse function. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, let's define our inverse function. Well, that'll be f inverse of x is equal to, there's two ways of writing it. I'll write it the modern way, and I'll write it the unmodern way. The lazy way, pretty much, right? Well, there's a reason for the arc sign. Arc sine is the same thing as sine's inverse. They're, they're exactly the same function. It's just if you were at a typewriter, which one's easier to type in? Arc sine. And that's why they used it before you know, computers came around and you could you know, put that power up really quickly. Um, arc sine was just a quicker way to say the sine inverse. So if you see arc sine anywhere, it's the exact same thing as sine's inverse. Wait, first, why the yeah, that's because when I restricted my... Okay, ready? If you're at angle 0 and you go this direction, you're going from 0 to pi over 2. Okay. So that's first quadrant. Okay. If you go backwards, you're going 0 to negative pi over 2. That's fourth quadrant. 
Okay, now you're on the unit circle. Here's zero. Ready? Right, here's zero. This is zero to pi over two. Gotcha. And this is zero to negative pi over two. Negative right. And we know the domain of this function. What is the domain of this function? Negative pi over two. No. Negative one to one. Negative one to one. Why? Because they switch. When you have inverse functions, the domain and range switch. So this one's going to be negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So when you use a sign inverse function, it is guaranteed to give you an answer only in the first and the fourth quadrant angles. That's it. So if you need an answer in the second and the fourth, second and the third, you're going to have to do a little extra work. Um, we can graph this if you want. It's not that hard. No, no, that's the graph of sine. This would be the graph of sine inverse. Well, the range is negative pi over, or pi over 2, pi over 2, to negative pi over 2. And the range, I'm sorry, the domain is 1, 2, negative 1. And we know what points to plot. This one has negative pi over 2, negative 1. So you take the coordinates and switch them, it becomes negative 1, uh, <laughs> negative 1, negative pi over 2. So it's down here. You get 0, 0, and you get 1 pi over 2. Wow, that looks like... look exactly the same? But there's a problem. you got to think of it this way. This graph is doing this uh, along the x-axis. This one's going to do the exact same thing going along the y-axis. So when you draw it, you're coming in kind of like from this direction. So when you're drawing it, it has... So like the curve is on the opposite side. Yeah, it, the curvature switches. Curvature switches. But the graph isn't that important. What's really important is the domain and the range. This function only takes in numbers that are between negative 1 and 1. So if you try to do sine inverse of 2, what's going to happen? It won't work. It's not going to work at all. It has to be so between negative 1 and it 1. It won't even go to like... 1.1. 1. 1. You can't even plug in 1.1. 1. 1. What would um, Chris, how would Chris look like inverse? Don't even care. <laughs> Seriously, I don't. <laughs> Yes, if you can do a, let's put, put it this way. Put that on the internet and then bring it in. Yeah, you do that, Sam. Um, there is no point in doing a cosecant inverse because you can use a sine inverse to find it. I'll be showing you how to do that later. One more time. What did I say? Oh. No, I said to you get a cosecant, you just use a sine inverse. To get a secant, you use a cosine inverse. To you get a cotangent inverse, you use a tangent inverse. But in the calculator, you can't put this inverse of sine. You have to put sine x in. No, you can put. No, no. There's second. The second. You hit second sine. Yeah. I'll teach you how to use your calculator for argument. Time. You don't even have that. Well, what do you put in? Where's your calculator? It's my first. Oh, we'll get to calculators in a second. What did you use? What about? Um, Do one point five. Cosine. It'll give you a the domain, domain error. Yeah, I know. Because it's... Well, I don't, don't use that negative one. Then. Yeah, what is that? Dave? This is uh, reciprocal. That's, that's, that's x that's raised to... It's in the that's negative. how you find cosecant, yeah. 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 But when you get to inverses, you have to be a little more careful. She did say... She did, that's cosecant, Diana. Not yeah. Do not use this button on your calculator to get this negative 1. Please don't, because that negative 1 means something totally different. This is a reciprocal. This is an inverse. All right, so if we have cosine of x, can we graph cosine of x really quickly? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 up, 1 down. Where does cosine start? Um, up, up. 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 And then it comes down, down, down. then it comes way down, <laughs> then it comes back up a little bit, and all the way up. So you get this kind of picture. Now, is this a one-to-one -one function? No, no, same reason as sine isn't. But I want to select a range, a, a new domain for this thing, so it is one-to-one. -one. But it has to include zero. So where would you go? Hey, you would just do the first half of it. You just do the first half of it, up to pi. So if you do the first half up to pi, you start up, hits the middle, gets all the way down. So you're including all the values that you need. 
all the values between 1 and negative 1, and we restricted our domain from 0 to pi. So the domain we're going to force this thing to be on is 0 to pi. And the range that we're going to keep this on is negative 1 to 1, the normal range. So if we can do that, we have a 1 to 1 function. And therefore, we can create an inverse function. And we're going to call it cosine inverse of x. Now, kind of like the sine works in the first and the fourth quadrants, what quadrants does cosine work in? It works in um, two, three. Two, no, two and three. Four? four? Maybe. One. one. We want it to work in one for sure. Oh, because okay. mm -hmm. one's always positive. Yeah, zero to pi, I think. Yeah, yeah. We're over here, zero. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Pi. Yeah. Zero to. So this is the top half of the circle, or all the angles in that top half of the circle. And we can do anything there, but if your angles are down here, we have to play a little, you know, around a little bit to get them in the right place. Okay, so the domain of this one is uh, negative one to one. Negative. negative one to one. You can only plug in numbers between negative one and one. And the range? Zero to pi. Zero to pi. The only answers you're gonna get out of it are first and second quadrant <laughs> angles. <sighs> All right. So far so good? Yeah. The graph of the inverse sine, cosine is not super important. But you can graph it, it's not that hard. So why are these strange? They don't work like normal inverses. Um, there's adjustments that have to be made. And because there has to be adjustments made, they sometimes get, well, a little confusing. So for instance. Are you going to graph this hmm? inverse? What's that? No, I'm not going to graph it. It's not worth it. Uh, Let's pick one that's kind of nice. Well, how about this? For example, if I want the sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2, what's it equal to? Uh, maybe I should talk about something else first. L let me talk about something else really quickly. Um, let me erase this part. This is really important. Now that we're dealing with both functions, when you say sine of something and it gives you something. What goes inside the parentheses? An angle. That's extremely important. It's sine of an angle. And the answer is? <laughs> opposite or hypotenuse, adjacent or hypotenuse. What are those things All called? All their angles too, right? Oh, uh, they're called triangle. No, no, no. When you take a, a number and you write it as two thirds, two out of three. Oh, fraction. Okay. <laughs> ratio. Oh, okay. It equals a ratio. What did you well, say? you know, you say that if it's two over three. I know, I know. I'm just trying to get you to think of what it means to have a fraction, a number over a number that are chosen as ratio. It's called a ratio. All right. If we do sine inverse, since the domain and range are flipping, the sine inverse takes ratio, ratio, some weird number, and it gives us out a angle. Please do not get confused between what's a ratio and what's an angle because that'll cause you more headache than you could believe. All right, so when I say sine inverse of square root of 3 over 2 is equal to something, the square root of 3 over 2 is the ratio. That comes from the opposite over hypotenuse. Literally for this one, opposite over hypotenuse. We're looking for an angle. All right, so if you don't know off the top of your head, draw a little triangle. This is opposite over hypotenuse. So where's the square root of 3 go? Opposite. Opposite. So this is your angle you're looking for, theta. So this is square root of 3. This side, hypotenuse is 2. What's the third side? 1. So the measure of this angle is? 30? For the angle. No, it's not the angle. No, I meant 60 for the 1 and 60. What's the measure of this angle here? 60. 60. Better known as? Pi over 3. Pi over 3. So this is equal to? Pi over 3. Geniuses. I'm a genius. <laughs> so, when in doubt, draw a picture. What if I did cosine inverse of negative one half? Now you got to be careful. Once a negative shows up in there, we're not talking about first quadrant anymore. We're talking about this. It'll be either second and third. Now, cosine is what adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, is it second or third? Second. It has, it has to, to be, be second. second, because cosine inverse only works in the first and the second. second. So it's guaranteed second quadrant angle. 
So you draw a picture. The bottom number is one. It's actually negative. The top one is two. No, Wait, hold on. What? Oh, the radius. The radius. Hypotenuse. Yeah. And, and this side is the square root of three. Sixty degrees. Sixty degrees. Sixty degrees. Again? How boring. Yeah. But the answer is not sixty degrees. Negative power three. Oh, wait. Can you show me again how how is that in the same quadrant? Um, cosine inverse only works in the first and the second quadrant. Cosine is positive in the first quadrant, yeah. and it's negative in the second one. So it's forced into the other one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it could be the third, but cosine inverse don't work down there. Right. Nobody works in the third quadrant. For sine, it's always the first and fourth. So it had to be the yeah, if it was negative, it would have to be in the fourth quadrant. Oh, because it's true. Yeah, because it's negative. All students say calculus is sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. All right, so we get negative 1 over 2. The other side is square root of 3. This measure of an angle is pi over 3, but that is not the answer I'm looking for. You're looking for the... Well, that's the reference angle. I'm looking for the main angle. What's the main angle? 2 pi over 3. This angle. Why do you do that? Because it's the measure in the zero. second quadrant. If you answer pi over three, what quadrant are you in? in the One. Why would I have a negative? No, oh. second. So this is two pi over three. So you got to be somewhat cautious. Because pi over three, pi minus pi over three is two pi over three. It's pi over three in the second quadrant. That makes it a reference angle. So your main angle always starts on the positive x-axis, and you have to wrap around to it. I'm so confused. Wait. Is it because the whole thing over there is pi, and then you have to minus mm -hmm. pi three? Sure, and sure. Pi and three. You can think of it that way, but I think of it this way. The bottom number is three. It cuts the top into three pieces, back off one. Three minus two. Okay. Three minus one. Three minus one is two. Makes it much easier than trying to just subtract yeah. it. Um, how about... Let's do it. <laughs> so we're going to go Sign inverse of negative one. <laughs> Can I draw a triangle? No. 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 Why? Because it doesn't include negative one. Right. So what do I draw? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> unit circle. So you draw a unit circle. It's only unit circle. The sign is which quadrant? Coordinate. Coordinate. Yeah, on a unit circle. Oh, it's in the uh, fourth. It's the y coordinate. So when is y equal to negative one? Right Down here. So the angle is three pi over two. Three pi over two. But the calculator, if you ever use a calculator on this, it's not going to give you three pi over two. It's just give you. It's going to give you negative ninety, negative pi over two. That's what I would do. Because our range, our range is. Uh, I've already said it. It's um, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Three pi over two is not it. So this will be. Negative. negative pi over 2. Even though 3 pi over 2 and this are exactly the same angle, it's proper to write it as negative pi over 2. So you keep it negative. If the 1 was positive, it would be pi over 2. I thought it could include negative pi over 2. Hmm. It starts at negative pi over 2 and it ends. You're thinking tangent. Will it ever be tangent? Tangent has vertical asymptotes there. Will it ever be pi over 2? Not that sine inverse, no. Because it only works in the first and the Fourth, so you get acute angle measurements, positive or negative. negative. The only obtuse one is that we're ever going to get is cosine. Cosine inverse will give you obtuse angles. Everybody else gives you acute. It'd be a very cute Sorry. <laughs> All right. So that brings us to what happens. If I put them together. Or do a composition. Bad thing. No, not horrible, but what if I want to find sine of cosine inverse oh, no. of two thirds? Uh -huh. Why the world would you ever want to do that? Because you put oh, two thirds in so many reasons. No. Well, you put two thirds into cosine. Inverse. So, what does two thirds represent? The uh, almost any, that's the ratio. No. Ratio. What's cosine inverse of two thirds represent? An angle. an angle. And then the sine is taking an angle and giving you a ratio. ratio. So at the very end of this, we expect a ratio. So it's really nice to know what you're supposed to end up with. Maybe. All right. You have to start on the inside. So you draw your picture. What quadrant will it be in? It will be in second. Wait. First. Why? I was the ratio is. I was thinking cosine. Yeah, I know. The ratio is positive. It's in first quadrant automatically. So you draw a triangle in the first quadrant. How do you label the sides? 
However you want to, how about that? Um, well, it two, will be on the like, bottom. Two's on the bottom. bottom. And then three's hypotenuse. Three's hypotenuse. Um, two squared minus... Oh, my God. Nine, nine minus four, four and five squared. Square to five. Square to five. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three squared minus two squared. Why are you doing squared. that? That was making me nervous. You're what? like, please fuck me. Please fuck me. That was making me nervous. I thought you were you dying. You're shaking your hand. I'm dying. I'm not that old. <laughs> no, I seriously thought you were dying. All right. So this is the angle we're talking about. Now this angle is cosine inverse of two thirds. So what is the sign of this angle? Um, it would be the opposite square, of square, 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 square of 5 over 3. Square of 5 over 3. What was that? I don't know. Alright, how about this thing? I bet I won't be able to do this when I get home. Wait, wait. I bet you won't be able to do this. Um, wait, we stay in the middle. Never mind. Oh, God. It's quiz time. Uh, yes, no, I'm still digesting this time. <laughs> digesting this time. Yeah. Yeah, we got a little time. All right. So, what quadrant are we in? Fourth. Fourth quadrant. Yeah, Sam and Joe, you gotta give us some time. We ain't smart. So, cosine of sine inverse of negative four sevenths. Because it is negative and because it's a sine inverse, it has to be. Fourth quadrant. So you draw your reference triangle in the fourth quadrant. Make sure it's going towards the x-axis. The angle that we're talking about here, theta, is sine inverse of negative four sevenths. So how do I label my sides if it's sine inverse? Seven is the hypotenuse. I'll give you that. Negative four is over here. Third side. Square to thirty-three. Square to thirty-three. Wow. Which is 49 minus 16. Totally knew that. 49 minus 16. I didn't. But it's positive because we're going to the right. So make sure you get your signs in there. Otherwise, you have to go back to some old hippie color. No, no. Um, all students take calculus. All right. So what is the cosine of this angle? Square root of 33 over 7. So why would we need to be able to do this? Because you want to torture you want to, yeah. Well, torture number one is this. If I do the sine of sine inverse of... I think I'm doing it backwards. No, no, I'm doing it backwards. Hold on. If I do sine inverse of the sine of 3 pi over 4... This gets confusing. Why? Doesn't it? Well, it gets confusing because you're used to inverses touching each other and going. Poof. Inverses when they inter when they run into each other like this, they normally go poof. Sine inverse, since it's a restricted domain, does not go poof automatically. You've got to be really careful. What quadrant is three pi over four? It's in the second quadrant, but sine inverse is not defined in. The second quadrant. So this angle that we're going to get spit out of here, remember this is an angle. Sine of an angle is a ratio. Sine inverse of the ratio is going to give you a first quadrant or a fourth quadrant angle. So it doesn't work? Well, it's going to work, but we have to be careful. This angle that we're talking about is over here. Now, in that quadrant, is sine positive or negative? It's not negative. Or sine is positive. Sine is positive. So the answer that you're going to get out of this is when sine inverse is positive, which it is in the first quadrant. So this is. So if you type this in your calculator, you you're going to get pi over 4. Well, well, you need to tell us more, because I'm I'll go over that again. No, I love you got pi over 4. Okay, because, with that. Uh, just listen, listen, listen. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant. Yes. Sine inverse does not work in the second quadrant. So you get a reference triangle, and the reference angle is reference angle. Oh, it's pi over four. Yeah. Since sine is positive here, you just take the reference angle and put it in the correct quadrant. The correct quadrant for a positive angle is, or positive sine is, the first quadrant. Can you tell us again by pi over two and then become the one? Not always. Not always. <laughs> Like if you had cosine inverse of <laughs> cosine oh, <no>. of. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, come on. 
Uh, five pi over four. Don't worry, I'm gonna Where's five pi over four located? It's located in the third. Third quadrant, yeah. but nothing works in the third quadrant. So cosine is in the third We're quadrant, that's where your angle is. Angle. But where do I have to put it? First. Now this is negative. Cosine is negative in this quadrant. Yeah. Yeah. It has to go in the second quadrant. So this becomes positive. So you can subtract. Positive. You have to move it. It's not that you're subtracting it, you're moving. Pi over four, right? like it becomes pi over four. Three pi over four. <laughs> <laughs> three times more. I'll go over that again tomorrow because that's important. Quiz time. Kind of rush that one. Yeah, I rushed that one. Oh I'll cut the. <gasps> he yells at me. My arm is when it's pitch black. Now, and my mom has to call me. And so, let's look at f of x equals tan of x. We pretty much know what the graph of it looks like. One period of it, at least. Starts over here at negative pi over 2. Ends up over here at pi over 2. What happens at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Why are we doing this again? I haven't finished what we did yesterday. Asymptotes. Asymptotes. Vertical. And the graph goes through the middle. And it goes up on the right, down on the left. Now, what's nice about this period of a tangent function is, is it one-to-one? -one? Yes. Yes. So it's invertible on this domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We don't have to do much changing. So we don't have to do much changing at all. Oh, it is. So we say, well, the domain is, yeah. now, is it bracket negative pi over 2 over 2 or parentheses negative pi over 2? It's parentheses. Because you cannot include pi over 2 on either end of it. So well, the domain is that. We, do. we did brackets because sine and cosine are defined at pi over two. Do you like way we did? Huh? Mm. Yesterday. When I did the domain, it was brackets. Yeah. Yeah. So, what were you going to ask? I know you did brackets. That's why I was about to Range. What's the range of this function? All real. All no. real. Yeah, all yeah. real. Negative infinity to positive infinity. So the nice thing about tangent. Yeah is sure you get a small domain, but you get a big, big range. So when I do the inverse, what's going to happen is tan inverse will accept any number you want to throw at it. But it's only going to spit out answers between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what quadrants does it work in? Um, first and fourth. Just like sine inverse. So sine inverse and tangent inverse are first and fourth. Cosine inverse is the only weird one that is first and second. And cosine inverse is actually more powerful because it gives you angles that are obtuse. Wait, so that will only work when it's flipped. Well, hold on. Let me define it. So f inverse of x is going to equal tan inverse of x. The domain of tan inverse? Negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range? Negative pi over 2 to pi over, pi over 2. The graph of this looks a lot like um, the cube root function. The cube root function. It does something like this. Comes in, goes down. But it's got these horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. But it's working in the third quadrant. The graph of it is, I'm not talking about third quadrant of this graph. I'm talking about the third quadrant of a unit circle. So that this that's... graph only, this function only works in a unit circle world, those two quadrants. But it can work in... Okay, Samantha, but... this is the unit circle. The unit circle has one, two, three, and four, right? This function only works in the first two quadrants. The graph is in three and one, but that's just the graph. Yeah, that's it has nothing to do with the unit circle. I don't know. Because it's negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Negative pi over 2. Uh, pi over 2. The first, the left hand, oh, right okay, hand gotcha. side of the unit circle. But the graph looks like this. Okay. Funny. <gasps> yeah. Is that, so that's what the graph looks like? It goes up. It goes up to pi over 2. And it goes down to negative pi over 2. It's in the book. I mean, you can look at it. The graph isn't that important because we're not going to manipulate it at all. Awesome. We're just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to graph those things. Good. Is there a, um, more importantly, 
I get to ask silly questions now. Why would you want to do that? For example, what is the cotan inverse of 1 without a cotan? calculator? Cotan inverse of 1. That's his cotan. Look at you. <laughs> no, That's how often I write cotangent. Cotangent inverse of 1. In radians. Power 4. Power 4. Can you prove it with a picture? <laughs> yeah. What quadrant would it have to be in? The first quadrant. The ratio is opposite. I'm sorry, adjacent over opposite. So it would be adjacent over opposite. And the third side has to be. Oh wait. Yeah, square root two. Square root two, and that forces this angle to be. Pi over four. Pi over four. I want my angles all in radians. Um, cosecant inverse of negative two square root of three over three. Huh? Cosecant inverse of negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now, if you try to draw a uh, picture with this one, you're going to run into some trouble. Yeah. What quadrant would I have to be in? If four. it's sine, it six four. it has to be 4. No calculator necessary, please. That's nice. I'm not going to let you use your calculator. I didn't use my calculator. Oh, yeah, I didn't you can't use your calculator on the test? <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to make it so that the things are weird, and I'm going to be looking for not these simple so ones. Samantha? Samantha. All right. Where would the negative 2 square root of 3 go? It would go, it would be negative 2 over the square root of 3. Right? That's basically what Well, I mean, going. most people wouldn't do that, though. They would look at it and go, oh, they'd put negative 2 square root of 3 here, and they'd put 3 there. And there's no special triangle set up that way. It's two. So, shh. I know what it is. Gosh. So, if you end up with something that I'm looking for an exact answer for, and you get weird numbers on your triangle, go back to the number on the inside and unrationalize it. How would you unrationalize it? Multiply the top and the bottom. By square root of? Three. three. So this becomes negative six over three square roots of three, better known as? Negative two over square root of three. And that'll label your triangle a lot better. Isn't this five? So this side really is three. Oh, square root of three. Negative two. Negative two. Yeah. And this side real. That side three. is the square root yeah. of three. No. no. That side no, is no, no. two. Oh, no, no. That side is the square root of three. Negative. I have it backwards. This is hypotenuse. This is uh, opposite because we're talking about. I lose my concentration when I hear this. I was telling you. I know, I know, I know. But when I start hearing too much of it, I it doesn't filter in my brain right. Uh, so, fourth quadrant, hypotenuse is 2, this side is negative square root of 3, and the third side is? 1. 1. So this angle has to be? Negative pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. Do we have to keep it that way, or? I'd rather radians than degrees in this case. I know, but what I'm saying is, do you want the big? Oh, no, no. If I ask between 0 and 2 pi, yeah, I want the big angle. But if I'm just asking this question, I'd rather this, because this is what your calculator is going to give you. It ain't giving me anything. It ain't giving me anything. It's getting a little bit harder. So how do you know what's in the form? It's cosecant inverse, right? Which is related to sine inverse, because you always go CS. And if this is sine, sine inverse only works in the first and the fourth, and it's negative. So it's definitely not the first. Does that make sense? Okay. You're just saying we did that. All right. Um, secant inverse of negative square root of 2. Oops, oops. Secant inverse of negative 2. Now, if you don't like secant inverse, what can I change it to? I really feel cosine. like cosine. Cosine. So I'd write cosine inverse of? Negative. Negative one half. Just reciprocate the ratio, not the angle. All right, so what quadrant do we have to be in? Definitely the second. Second quadrant. Mm -hmm. 
Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent side is down here. What? Adjacent side is negative 1, so where would it go? Right there. Right here. So you get negative 1, the hypotenuse is. The third side is. Square root of 3, the angle is. Pi over 3. No, that angle is pi over 3. Oh, I actually asked. I read 2 it. 2 pi over 3. The reference is pi over 3. The yeah. whole angle is yeah. eight one double two pi over three. Is you want the answer that a calculator will spit out, or this function is supposed to spit out. Is cosine always in the first and second? First and second quadrant. Sine and tangent are first and fourth. First and fourth. Sine and tangent. Sine and tangent are first and fourth. All right, make it a little harder. How about tan inverse of the tangent? Of uh, 5 pi over 6. The angle has to be in the first or the fourth. So positive. But this is 5 pi over 6, That's which is six. It's gonna be negative pi in the second. Six. So, oh, if you draw your picture, this <coughs> angle would lie in the second quadrant. That's a problem. Yeah, you can't because tan there. inverse does not work in the second quadrant. So, what is the sine of tangent in the second quadrant? Pi. Oh, wait, what is the sine? Sine of tangent. Not sine function, S-I-G-N. Sine of tangent in the second quadrant. Negative. 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 So it's definitely not a first quadrant angle, so that forces it to be? Fourth. 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 You'll find with tangent, it just goes right through the origin to the next quadrant. So if it's in the third quadrant, it jumps back into the first. If it's in the second quadrant, it jumps over to the fourth. So it's a neat little trick you can play. So it's negative pi so here, you get your little picture, and the angle is pi over 6, but the reference angle is pi over 6, but the angle itself is negative. negative. So this becomes negative pi over 6. Basically, the shape is poof. They kind of go poof, but in a weird way. You'll still get the number on the bottom. You definitely might not get the number on the top, and the sign would even be different. Why? Okay. For the secret. We can't inverse. Uh -huh. Why is it 2 pi over 3 and not pi over 3? Because cosine is combined in the first and the second quadrant, so it's perfectly fine being here. Mm -hmm. So since it's here and the reference angle is pi over 3, the angle is 2 pi over 3. Cosine is the only one that'll go obtuse. Everybody else is acute positive or acute negative. Co cosine and secant are the only ones that are obtuse. Mm -hmm. Only ones. That makes them actually kind of more interesting than sine inverse and cosine, or tangent inverse. Wait, which ones are the only ones that are obtuse? The one that's interesting is cosine inverse because it has an obtuse answer. See, okay, it's the only one? It's the only one. The one that you just did, um, one is that one at the bottom, so the answer will be the one that's the bottom. Because when you hit tan inverse and you get the ratio of this, if we went through the ratio and got it, I think it's um, square root of 2 or 1 over, no. Square root of one over square root of three or square root of three, one of the two. And then you did the tan inverse, um, it's got to be put in the first or the fourth quadrant. So since this angle is over here and tangent in this quadrant is negative, you'd have a negative ratio. So if you did a tan inverse of a negative ratio, the answer would pop into the fourth quadrant to make it negative, to keep the angle where it's supposed to be, negative angle. Is that kind of? Yeah. Weird sense. It's just because the tan inverse isn't defined over here. I mean, we can go through this piece by piece. Where's 5, pi over 6? Well, that's in the second quadrant. Second quadrant. If this is pi over 6, the sides of the triangle are 1, one 2, two square root of 3. This negative. is negative. Right? So it would be 1 over I mean. Slow down, I'm getting there. So the tangent of this reference angle would be 1 over negative square root of 3. And then when you do tan inverse of that, you'd say, well, tan inverse of negative 1 over square root of 3. But to do tan inverse of negative angle, that would be in the fourth quadrant. And then it jumps over here. That's the reason, because tan inverse only works in the first or the fourth. Positive for the first, negative for the fourth. Sweet. And then the negative 1 would go here, and the square root of 3 would go here, and the 2 would go there. That's cool. Yeah. So in this case, it's like, this would just, or tan, the inverse tangent and the inverse sine would be the same, so it's like at the point where you... Yeah, and 
in that right hand side of the unit circle bar, where the cosine is the top half. How about, did I do this one yet? Sine inverse of the sine of 4 pi over 3. I'm trying to come up with all the nasty ones first. We get them out of our way. Because I don't want to show you the ones that just go poof. Because if they just go poof, you think they always go. This will mean a third quadrant. It's not possible. Well, where's 4 pi over 3? Third quadrant. Third quadrant. The problem with that is sine inverse does not work in the third quadrant. What sine is sine in the third quadrant? It's negative. So the only place I could put this angle is the fourth quadrant. It's the only place sine inverse is defined, and it's defined to be negative. negative. So then you say, well, the reference angle here is pi over 3, but it's coming negative pi over 3. So this is negative pi over 3. So how come the inverse is going? <laughs> it's just the way we define them. To make sine a one-to-one -one function, we chose negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so first and fourth. Tangent was already negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so first and fourth. And then cosine, the only part of it was one-to-one -one from 0 to pi. That's the only reason. I mean, you could define an inverse function for here, but it's not worth it because it's just a weird place to be. Third quadrant. It's like the dead zone. Twilight zone. Twilight zone. All right, how about cosine inverse of cosine of 3 pi over 4? Right That's going to be in the uh, second quadrant. All right, so this angle is in the second quadrant. Yeah. And the answer is? Pi over four, but it's going to be it's going to be your uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be three pi over four. Why? Because it because cosine inverse is defined in the second quadrant, and they go poof because it's actually defined here. So this is just equal to. Can you go through? You want me to go through the whole thing? All right. So the first part inside the first part is be cosine three pi over four. The first thing I look at is where is this angle? Second. second quadrant. Then if I take the cosine of it and then the cosine inverse of it, cosine inverse is defined in the second quadrant. So your angle is going to spit out exactly the same. If they're well defined, then they do go poof. It's just when... So what if it was negative? If it was negative? Oh, if you did cosine inverse of cosine of negative 3 pi over 4, that changes things. What quadrant is negative 3 pi over 4 in? Third quadrant. But cosine inverse doesn't work in the third quadrant. So where does it work? First and second. And cosine is negative down here in the third quadrant, so it has to be second. And take a guess what the answer is. 3 pi over 4. That's pretty cool. That is kind of cool. You just leave it alone. And then the other one, after you mess around with it enough, it comes back to 3 pi over 4. Which is kind of cool, but you do lose the negative. You do lose so you the negative. Just left it alone and said no. If you, the second one? No, the first one. The first one, yeah, because it's, if they're both defined in that quadrant, just leave it alone, it goes poof. Four, I'll throw a few up here, but I don't want you to get used to these because they get a little weird. Well, if you get used to these, you start thinking it works all the time. So, for instance, if I do sine uh, inverse of sine of 11 pi over 6. No, this one's not weird. This one actually is. No, this one's bad. <coughs> it's, fourth. it's in the fourth quadrant, so it is well defined. Yeah. So does that mean the sine inverse and sine just cancel? No. no. It's, it's going to be negative. It's pi negative pi over 6. Can I draw it? Yeah. If we do 11 pi over 6, it's this way. Right? The inverse, uh, I'm sorry, the reference angle, of course, is yeah, pi over 6. But when you do sine inverse, it's defined here, not wrapping around. So the only way to do it is to come backwards. So it would be negative pi over 6. Because your answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. 
that make sense? No. Your answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Is 11 pi over 6 between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2? No. no. So you have to force it to be in there, and the only way to do that is to make an acute angle out of it. Negative pi over 6. Go backwards. All right, let me do one that actually kind of works nicely. Cosine inverse of the cosine of 17 degrees. Plug this in real quick. Don't you dare touch your calculator with this one or I'll hurt you. Well, What's the answer? 17. 17. Why? Because poof. Angle is in what quadrant? First. First. And cosine inverse is defined in? First. First and second. Uh, second. So this just pops out as? 17. Then they go poof because they're defined in the right quadrants. If you have tangent uh, inverse of the tangent of negative pi over 5, what quadrant is negative pi over 5 in? Fourth. And tan inverse is defined in the first and fourth, so this one's going to pop out as negative pi over 5. They go poof if that happens. So as long as it's in its right quadrant, it'll go poof. Right. But if it's out of its right quadrant, you better start drawing pictures. Mm -hmm. Force it. Then I'll draw pictures all the way. We'll draw pictures all the way. Okay. I'm happy to see lots and lots of pictures. Mm -hmm. Color pencils would be nice. No, I colored the. I forgot color the book. Yeah. All right. Now the real reason to teach the inverse of an, you know, of a sine of an angle. Is this. When you get to calculus, you have to figure out things that look like. I think I have the order right. No, no, I have the order wrong. Hold on. Sine of the cosine inverse of x. This is just a. Go for it. Do engineers. Yes. And that. They use it. <laughs> oh my god. It's yeah. the basis of engineering is based off of trigonometry. We wouldn't have engineering without trigonometry. We wouldn't have a lot of things without trigonometry. Absolutely. What does trigonometry do? I have no earthly idea. All I know is that my. No, no, I'm asking you. I'm getting okay, to good. it. But we'll get to it. So, <laughs> to solve a problem in calculus, you need to be able to do this calculation as a function of x. As a function of x. So I need to come up with an expression in terms of x without a sine or a cosine involved in it. So this is actually kind of neat. Oh, it, it, the cosine and sine disappear. Can you explain that again, please? Well, when you run a sine inverse into a sine, they go away. If you run a sine inverse into a cosine, the sine and the inverse will go away. So what's going to happen is these two are going to go away, but the ratio is going to be manipulated a little bit. Remember, that's a ratio because it's next to an uh, inverse. So if I draw a picture, I get to choose what I'm going to let x be. So I'm going to let x be in the first quadrant. All right, so if I throw x in the first quadrant, here is, um, now is it x degrees? The ratio. And since it's cosine, the ratio is? X over Well, it's x over 1, so the x represents? The adjacent. The adjacent, so that would be this side. One is the hypotenuse. One is the hypotenuse. What's the third side? Uh, x squared minus... No. One minus x squared. And a little bit more. No. One minus x squared. C squared equals a squared. Oh, yeah. squared. It becomes the square root of... One minus x squared. So, remember this cosine inverse represents what? Yeah. The it x represents, represents the a ratio. Angle. It represents the angle. So here's your angle. Let's let our angle be equal to theta. theta. So here's theta, our angle. Then it says, well, take the sine of this angle. Well, what's the sine of this angle? One minus the square root of one minus x squared over one. The square root of one minus x squared over one, better known as the square root of one minus x squared. So you've taken sines and cosines did a little calculation and come up with a nice algebraic expression that has nothing to do with sine or cosine. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that they go poof. They 
do something to each other and they eventually go away. Poof is inverse on top of itself, but this is a sign of a cosine inverse. Now, if it was cosine of cosine inverse, the answer would just be x. How boring. Assuming it's in the first quadrant. How about... Go for it. Okay, that's the cosine. Yeah, that's the cosine. Yeah, that's the cosine. Adjacent, oh, this is a ratio. This has, it's a ratio. So it becomes x over 1, and it's supposed to be related to adjacent over hypotenuse. So then you find the sign of x. So you, no, no, you just say the adjacent is x, the hypotenuse is 1, you come up with the third side, and you find sine of the angle, not x, sine of this angle. Yeah, sine would be this one over this one. How did you get 1 as the hypotenuse? Well, it's x over 1. You can always write that as a fraction. And adjacent would be x, and the hypotenuse would be 1. Okay. How about this one? Tan of sine inverse of x. So you put your angle in the first quadrant. How do I label the sides? The bottom? The Don't bottom know. X over the side over here? X. x the hypotenuse? And the third side? The square root of 1 minus x squared. And then the tangent of this would be? Uh, x times 1 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. What? 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 <laughs> you lost me. That. that one. x times 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Yeah. X over. I, I rationalized, I'm sorry. Square root of? Oh, okay. Square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Square root of? 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 Cotangent. Is this like, like, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. I'm just manipulating what this thing does. So I take the ratio x, I do a sine inverse to it, and that puts me in the first quadrant, and then it becomes opposite over hypotenuse, x over 1. And then the third side by factoring theorem. And then you can find all the trigonometry you want on that thing. Last one, last one, last one. Um, Secant of cotangent inverse of x. Not that you'd ever see this one, but you should be able to figure it out. Cotangent. Draw your triangle. Adjacent. Adjacent over. I mean, opposite. I'm sorry. Adjacent over opposite. So this side becomes. One. X. X. This side becomes one. one. This side becomes the square root of X squared plus one. X squared plus one, but most books will write it this way. Don't know why. I don't write it that way. Yeah, but either way, it doesn't matter. But most of them will write it one plus X squared. There's a reason for it. So, what is the secant of that triangle? The square root of X squared plus one X. The square root of one plus X squared over X. Hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse over adjacent. So those aren't too bad as long as you assume the angles are in the first quadrant. What's cool is you can assume the angles are in any quadrant and the answers pretty much stay the same. There might be a plus or minus off. Alright, today's lesson. Wait, it's 2.30. It's 2.30. Oh, how horrible. What? It's not horrible. How horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible.